There are three stages in the development of a fire that a ship and its crew must be able to deal with. Oh, smoke! The initial stage, that is, when a fire first starts, the developing fire, and the fully developed fire. Everything that needs to happen during the first two of these stages should happen without the need for input from the master. That's what all the drills and training are for. At this point, the master should be monitoring the situation and developing a plan of action if the fire reaches the third stage. Chief, Chief Captain. Yes, Captain, go ahead. Can you give me an update of the situation? As the person who has ultimate responsibility for the lives of everyone on board the ship, the master may well feel under stress, particularly if there are a lot of things happening which are competing for his attention. To help with this and allow him to focus on the fire, which is the most important thing he has to do, if possible, the allocation of crew to the various parties should include another officer to work with him on the bridge. This person could then be in charge of communications with the various fire parties, as well as maintaining a record of events. Yes, sir. Okay. And what's your current location, please? I'm here right now in front of the Soviet planet. The strategy the master must develop should include boundary cooling, boundary starvation, and ventilation control. The master may also have to change the heading of the vessel to minimize wind fanning the flames. It may also be useful to bring the ship nearer to land, or, if well out at sea, to consider bringing the ship to a stop. If lots of water hoses are being used to fight a fire on board, the master must bear in mind that the weight and movement of this water may compromise the stability of the ship. This is particularly important on large deck areas, such as vehicle decks on row rows and car carriers, where the effect can be particularly severe. Once the fire is contained, the master can plan the attack. The options are to continue to keep the fire contained, use fixed installations, or to apply other means of control. Guys. Smoke detected in steering gear room, close the ventilation, start the fire pumps, you know what to do, proceed. That should include looking at all the resources available within the area around the ship for help, including those based on shore. Second, can you ask local authorities if there are any shore fire team available for us? Yes, Captain. Even if the ship is at sea, shore-based fire parties may be able to attend using helicopters. This could be vital if there are not enough crew to effectively control the fire or where specialist skills and equipment are required. The priority is always the safety of the crew. For control, for control, this is motor vessel. With this in mind, the master needs to make sure that if outside help is required, that is communicated to the appropriate shore-based authorities or other shipping in as timely a fashion as possible. There's no sense in asking for help at a point when it cannot possibly arrive in time. We have, for the moment, one casualty, one casualty which is unconscious. In the case of a serious fire that is threatening the ship, one of the master's concerns should be to get non-essential personnel off the vessel, providing the weather and sea conditions allow. Every fire is different but many procedures will be common to any incident. Remember, you can find more information about the topics covered in this program in the workbook. A fire has broken out in the stores area of the ship. Attention all crew, attention all crew, attention all crew. Fire on board, fire on board, fire on board. Present to master station. Just make sure that all ventilation and uh, doors are closed. Where possible, if the area is clear of personnel,
the master stops the vent fans and has the fire dampers closed, either manually or by remote control. If the master did not take this action, it's possible that the fire could use the trunking to jump decks and reappear a few decks higher up. Shutting off the fans and closing the dampers starves the fire of air and hinders fire spreading through trunking. The master instructs that the engines are put on standby. Engine control room, chief engineer speaking. Chief engineer, captain speaking. Uh, put the engine on standby. Ah, uh, engine is standby, just a moment. This keeps power available for any change of speed or position in relation to the wind. The engine room informs the master the fire pumps are up to full pressure. Still running on working uh, pressure 6.5 bar, all going well. And that the emergency fire pump and emergency generator have been started too. Plans of the vessel may assist the master in understanding the location of the fire and the problems if it were to spread to other areas of the ship. There are also other sources of useful information. The emergency contingency plan, stability information and so on. A log of reports, the time and the action taken should be kept. Yes, I can go ahead. Just for your information, sir, that uh, we have two casualties, two casualties. Captain. Reports come to the bridge from all mustering groups and the master learns that two people are missing. He gets more information from the on-scene commander. Can you confirm the person who are missing? Yeah, I'll confirm the, the second engineer and uh, OS mate who are missing. The master considers the course of the ship can, can and the relative wind. The master the instructs the bridge watchkeeper to contact nearby ships, coastal radio stations and, if necessary, other parties like the local coast guard and the company's designated person ashore, or DPA. If the situation is serious enough, he will send out an urgency signal or a distress call. Now, the firefighting party is entering with a hose. Once the fire is covered by hoses, the master and the attack party leader discuss what selective ventilation may be carried out. The firefighters come to the fire zone and enter the blazing area, hose turned to spray. Depending on the vessel, the master orders the support party to prepare the lifeboat in readiness to abandon ship. Extra supplies like blankets and water are brought up and the engine is checked. Sards, the EPIRB and portable VHF sets are placed in the boat. The bridge is protected by fire-resistant doors. All the same, the master must always have an alternative command post away from the accommodation, from which he can control the ship if it becomes necessary to evacuate the bridge. Indeed, on some smaller vessels, the bridge may not be suitable for command and control purposes, and an alternative location must be used. The firefighters tackle the fire. It's now responding to their efforts, but is not yet under control. The fire is responding, but unfortunately we, uh, we currently do not have it under control, over. The master advises the leader of the emergency party to check various areas to prevent the fire spreading. Other teams begin to boundary cool and boundary starve the fire by removing flammable material from adjacent bulkheads. Chief, Captain speaking, please check your engine room for hot spots. The master tells the engine room to check for hot spots and to prepare to cool. Engine room personnel have a number of emergency escape routes, either through the shaft tunnel or steering flat, so that they can reach open deck. Where large amounts of water can accumulate, the free surface effect of that water and the additional weight at various levels can seriously affect stability. Portable pumps may have to be set up to direct the water to an open deck. Surplus water should be directed as low in the ship as possible for pumping out. The master should consider the effects on ship stability of volumes of water at each deck level. At the fire, 
The blaze is under control. The firefighters damp it down thoroughly. When the fire is extinguished, the leader of the emergency party reports this to the bridge. Yeah, Captain, just to confirm now. The fire is now extinguished. Chief, Chief Captain, just keep fire watch. The master informs shipping, coastal radio stations, the owners and the ship managers accordingly and thanks them for their assistance. OK, thank you very much for your support. At the fire area, a continuous watch will be kept against reignition, and the firefighters will go in and remove any smouldering material. Had there been any casualties, the master would report this and make arrangements to evacuate the injured crewmen from the ship. If this incident were to occur whilst the ship was in port, the shore fire brigade would normally take over the responsibility of firefighting. Even so, the ship's emergency organization would handle the vital early stages, liaising with the fire brigade and harbor authorities. To summon this assistance, you must know the necessary procedures. This information is given to the master on arrival and must be clearly displayed on the ship. The fire wallet must be available. It contains a general layout plan of the ship, a safety equipment plan, a cargo stowage plan in cargo ships, and also stability information. A copy of the wallet should be available to officers, normally on the bridge, and one must be available outside the deck house, usually at the point of entry to the ship. The port fire brigade will need to know if anyone is missing so there must be a roll call and an accurate record of who is aboard. The fire brigade will also expect support from the master and ship's crew. The incidents we have looked at are varied. They could have happened on any kind of ship. Container ships, rowrows, passenger ships and so on. They might have occurred whilst the ship was in port, dry dock, or when half the crew were ashore. Remember, whatever the circumstances, the same basic principles of command and control apply. Time is short when a fire starts. The situation demands quick and decisive action. The foundations for such action lie in efficient organization. That requires mutual trust, and that comes about as a result of thorough training. In a critical situation, everyone must know what to do, and know that they can depend on others for their own safety. Above all, they must be confident they can rely on the orders they receive. That is command and control in action. You can find more information about the topics we've covered in the workbook. Next, let's briefly look back at some key points from this program. It must be available to officers, normally on the bridge, and to firefighters boarding the ship, usually at the point of entry to the ship. <laughs> 